I'm Kimberly Campos, and I'm here with Alessandra and Naomi for our PowerPoint on the thematic review of identity for all 10 units. So for unit one, we have global prehistory and the tactical female figurine. It has a portrayal of cultural identity for those people of the time with its unique facial features and decorations. They indicate specific identities within society, such as social statuses or roles. As the figurine is female, we can see it as a representation of gender norms and how a woman would identify. It also speaks on the identity of an individual, as the two faces can symbolize duality in a person, reflecting the inner conflict between different aspects of somebody's personality. Next up, we have Unit 2, the Ancient Mediterranean, and we chose the Peplos Corre. For political identity, this piece is a divine entity, which can convey messages about certain belief systems and the importance of mythology at the time. Furthermore, in the aspect of societal identity, the Peplos Corre from the ancient Greece reflects how society views a woman and how a woman should look like. As due to her traditional garment worn by women in Greece, it also shows society's status as clothing was an important marker of identity in an ancient society. In Unit 3, Early Europe and Colonial Americas, we have Las Meninas. For societal identity, this piece holds a very deep royal identity as it holds the royal family and the Infanta Margarita Teresa, the daughter of King Philip IV of Spain. Other figures in this piece convey aspects of their social identity and status such as the curvier servants and artist himself. For viewer's identity, the painting is slightly ambiguous and makes you question your own position with the subject staring towards you. The boundaries between the observed and the observer are blurred and it challenges the notion of perception. Moving on to Unit 4, Late Europe and America, we're looking at the piece of the two Fridas where we see the topic of dual identity. This piece is an example of a person's identity, specifically Frida de Carlo, and how who you identify with as a person can be a conflict with how society sees you. Frida de Carlos Mexican identity, as you can see due to her Tijuana dress and her European identity with her European style white dress, are both connected and both are her. This piece is an insight into her emotional identity and more so her struggles with how she presents herself to the world. Next up we have Unit 5 of the America's Hyde Painting of the Sundance. The Hyde Painting of Sundance has strong cultural identity through representations of animals, plants, and landscapes, which shows the tribe's deep connection to the land and its environment. It also combined the narratives of the buffalo hunt with the wolf dance, which affirmed the native identity of the people. With this piece being made with the purpose of being sold to American tourists, it represents the resilience of the tribe to preserve their cultural identity with the pressures of colonization and assimilation. And then in Unit 6 of Africa, we have the female pole mask. It is deeply rooted within the Chukwe people and a representation of their cultural identity as it represents the idealized female for that time. The mask was also an example of the social hierarchy associated with women's rules and identities set by society as caretakers, mediators, and guardians of tradition. It was also used as a political symbol as it was a reference to ancestral authority and spiritual power that was used in ceremonial contexts like fertility rituals and initiation rites. For Unit 7, West and Central Asia, we have the Buddhas of Bamiyan, which represent the idea identity of Buddhism in Afghanistan and Central Asia during the period when Buddhism was widespread in the region. They symbolize the presence and influence of Buddhism as a major faith tradition in the area, serving as focal points for the religious worship, pilgrimage, and spiritual contemplation. The Buddhas reflect a fusion of diverse cultural influences, including Indian, Persian, and Central Asian artistic traditions, contributing to the multicultural tapestry of Afghanistan's cultural identity. For Southeast and Southeast Asia, in Unit 8, the funeral banner of Lady Dai reflects the social status and identity of Lady Dai within ancient Chinese society. As a wife of a high-ranking official, Lady Dai belonged to the elite class, and her burial with such an elaborate banner indicates her privileged position. The imagery on the funeral banner it provides insights into the cultural identity of Lady Dai and her community. The scenes depicted, such as the celestial realm, mythical creatures, and ritualistic activities reflect the cosmological beliefs and cultural practices of ancient China. Symbols such as dragons, phoenixes, and celestial beings convey the spiritual and mythological dimensions of Chinese culture, highlighting the importance of religious beliefs and rituals in shaping identity. Now onto Unit 9, the Pacific, we have the female deity of Nukoro, which likely embodies elements of the cultural identity of the Nukoro people. As a representation of a deity or an ancestral figure, it may reflect beliefs, myths, and rituals that are central to their culture. As a 
deity or spiritual being, the female deity of Nakuru, may symbolize aspects of Nakuru's spirituality, cosmology, and religious practices. Given the close relationships between the Pacific Island cultures and their natural environments, the female deity of Nakuru may incorporate elements of environmental identity. It can also be associated with specific natural features, resources, or phenomena found on Nakuru Island, symbolizing the Nakuru's people's connection to their land, sea, and ecosystem. Last but not least, we have Unit 10, Global Contemporary Rebellious Silence. This piece explores the themes of identity by examining a woman's role and identity in an evolving cultural landscape in the Middle East. It shows how the West views people of the East. This is showcased by the veil, the calligraphy or script, the gun, and the gaze. The a piece also includes the political complexities that the Shah and Islam imposes on the lives of women. Gradually, the rule has become more restrictive, leaving women to question how much of their identity is up to them.